Uh, this is a small video regarding electron disease lesson. In grade nine at Excel, we have uh, uh, the electron disease lesson. And there are several electron disease systems to discuss. And uh, I thought of discussing electrolysis of water. Uh, when it comes to electrolyzing a water substance, uh, water or an electrolyte, uh, there are a few things that we should realize. The first thing is electrolysis. As you know, electrolysis is decomposing an electrolyte using DC source, not AC. And then what is an electrolyte? Electrolyte are aqueous or molten ionic substances that can pass electricity. This is not like conductors. Conductors are solid substances that can pass electricity, but electrolytes are aqueous or molten. Now, let's talk about a very, very important area in our Excel grade nine syllabus. This is under electrolysis, the electrolysis of water. Before we discuss about electrolysis of water, there are a few things that you have to remember. All you have learned these things. One small thing is electrolysis. What is electrolysis? Electrolysis is decomposing an electrolyte using DC source. Now you'll have the question, what is an electrolyte? An electrolyte is a substance in aqueous or molten form, and they should be ionic, and they should be able to pass electricity. Remember that an electrolyte can conduct electric current with the help of free ions. Because this free ion word is there, we should know that it's always ionic compounds that can pass electricity, but not in solid form. Because in solid form, Ions are not free. Now we try to talk about this electrolysis of water <coughs> in detail. Definitely, when you want to carry out this electrolysis lesson, we had to have an apparatus. It's a simple laboratory experiment. If you carry out this in the laboratory, uh, first we need to have a beaker containing some water, and water is an electrolyte here. You can see here, okay, I have taken a beaker. This blue thing is water, which is going to be acting as the electrolyte in this experiment. Now, we had to insert two probes into this, probes. We call them electrodes, carbon electrodes. These probes are the substances which we use to pass electric current into the solution from a circuit. We use a DC supply. When you use a DC supply and you connect to this, uh, the two carbon electrodes, we can pass electric current through this solution. However, these two electrodes come under two categories. One is an anode and the other one is cathode. You have always learned what an anode is and what a cathode is. You can see here, the electrode which is connected to the circuit on the left-hand side to the cell on the left-hand side is having a positive charge. And this positively charged electrode is known as anode. At the same time, on the other side, we have the negatively charged electrode and that's called cathode. These are the places where chemical reactions occur when electrolysis happens. See, Anode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, and cathode is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. You can see on the left-hand side, we have the anode, and the battery has, in this long line side, this is positive side, and there you have the anode. And the cathode is on the other side, the negative terminal, to that the cathode is connected. Now, this is all set. For electrolysis lesson. We have this uh, electrolysis apparatus as I have discussed in the last slide. There's a very, very important point to know that if you take distilled water, just H2O, 
it is not able to pass electricity. Remember, distilled water cannot pass electricity because they don't have free cations and anions. I told earlier, electrolysis happens because of the movement of free cations and anions present in an aqueous solution or a water substance. Now, uh, the distilled water sample, if you take a distilled water sample, there are no cations or anions. Therefore, I don't think this apparatus is going to give any result for us. So we had to do something. What is it? We can add a small amount of an acid or an alkali to the distilled water. So that water gets activated. And we have activated water in this system now. Remember, if you want to electrolyze water sample, you have to add a bit of an acid, hydrogen donors, or an alkali hydrogen acceptors in order to make this sample of distilled water to pass electricity. However, when you add acid or alkali, alkali, this is not distilled water anymore. It is an activated water. Or we can call it actified water also. When you take actified water as the electrolyte, there are two types of ions present in the electrolyte. What are these two types of ions? You know what is H2O? H2O comprises of two things. First one is hydrogen ions. I mean, the solution, we have the hydrogen ions. Not only that, we have OH negative ion source. The solution contains OH negative ions. You should understand very well that this reaction system contains only two types of ions, H plus ions and OH negative ions. Otherwise, you can't go ahead with it. However, now solution contains hydrogen ions and OH negative ions. Those are the ions present in the activated water. There can be some other ions as well, but we pay more attention to the majority or the most available type of ions, which are H plus ions and OH negative ions. Now I take the diagram again. When you carry out this electrolysis, what happens when electric current is supplied to the system? Now, see, this is a completed circuit. If electrolysis happens, there are very, very vital things, few things that should happen in the system. What is the first one? The cations in the system, which are H plus ions, you can see in the diagram, they travel towards the negatively charged cathode. Where is the cathode? On the right hand side. Why do you think H plus ions go towards the cathode? Because of the positive and negative attractions. H plus ions will go to the cathode direction. Now see. And what, what is going to happen to OH minus? They are the anions in the system. OH negative ions travel towards a positively charged anode in this manner. Now the ions are separated. Cations have gone to cathode. Anions have gone to the anode because of the opposite attractions in charges. Once this happens, you can see OH negative on the anode, H plus ions are on the cathode. Some reactions can happen now. What happens at electrodes when cations and anions travel towards cathode and anode respectively? If you think carefully, what happens at the anode? You must remember, at the anode, the reaction happens. This reaction is called oxidation. OH negative ions, now already OH negative ions have gone to the anode. OH negative ions participate in an oxidation reaction. Remember, anode reactions are oxidation reactions. What is happening during oxidation reaction? Electrons are released. Oxidation is releasing up electrons. You see, OH negative ions participate in an oxidation reaction. Oxidation, remember, anode oxidation, producing water and oxygen gas at the same time releasing electron. We call this reaction oxidation because electrons are removed. What will happen to these electrons? 
These electrons will go to the circuit, the wire over here. Electrons are produced on the anode and these electrons are going to the circuit. Now, how electrons are produced? You will understand only if you see the equation. You see? To balance, I have added four hydroxyl ions. You had to do a bit of work to remember this. Four hydroxyl ions, they release four electrons. Two water and one oxygen. Again, look at it carefully. Four hydroxyl ions release four electrons, two water molecules and one oxygen molecule. This is what happens at the anode. Okay, oxidation happened at the anode. Let us see what is going to happen at the cathode. Before that, can you see over here? Some air bubbles are there. What are these bubbles? These are the oxygen gas bubbles form. See, oxygen gas is produced at the anode. So you can see the electrode, the anode getting covered with oxygen bubbles and it will continue until your, electro, your electricity system stops passing electricity. I mean, unless you switch it off, you can see, you know, oxygen gas bubbles are produced and they continuously uh, get liberated. Okay. Now we go to the cathode. What is happening at the cathode? You can see near the cathode, we have hydrogen ions. If at anode, oxidation happens, definitely at the cathode, reduction has to happen. And if oxidation is about releasing electrons, the opposite of it at the cathode electron should be gained according to this equation. H plus ions participate in a reduction reaction gaining electrons. Try to compare anode reaction and cathode reaction. At the anode reaction, electrons are released and at the cathode reaction, electrons are gained. Now, who is going to gain electrons? H plus ions. There should be two over here, two H plus. I'll read this again. H plus ions participate in a reduction reaction gaining electrons. The product at the cathode reaction is hydrogen gas. See, H plus ions, please remember, if you take down this equation, there should be two in front of H plus, there should be two. Two H plus ions are there, getting two electrons and producing H2. This is a gas. So you can see on the cathode, similar to anode, gas bubble formation. What are these gas bubbles? Hydrogen gas bubbles. During this reaction of electrolysis of water, you will be able to see bubble formation, gas bubble formation, both at the anode and cathode. However, at the anode, it is because of oxygen gas, as you can see in the equation, anode reaction. And on the cathode reaction, it is hydrogen gas according to uh, how it is given in the equation. Now you can see oxygen gas bubbling on the anode and hydrogen gas bubbling on the cathode. If uh, the H plus ions and OH negative ions, which are in the same system, separate out towards anode and cathode because of their charge differences and undergo anode and cathode reactions. What is the overall reaction happening? What's the meaning of overall reaction? Here we have discussed the reaction of the uh, reaction at the anode and reaction at the cathode. At the anode, you can see electrons are released. I'm Repeating this, at the anode, electrons are released, and the anode, uh, at the cathode, electrons are taken. So one equation is one reaction is giving electrons, the other reaction is gaining electrons. So there should be some sort of a combination because one is giving electron. These removed electrons are taken by the cathode reaction. Actually, what happens is, uh, as I explained. Explained earlier, it's written here also. At the anode reaction, when electrons are produced, these electrons go to the circuit from the anode side. Electrons enter the circuit and they go through the battery over here to the cathode. There, hydrogen ions take two electrons. Otherwise, you, you may wonder from where this hydrogen is getting electrons. Of course, 
electrons produced in the anode. If I repeat, anode reaction over here on the left-hand side, when produced electrons, they go through the circuit to the other side. To the other side means cathode. Towards the cathode, H plus ions come. And these H plus ions, I said dash should be two over here, they will react with electrons to produce H2, hydrogen gas. So you can see hydrogen gas also bubbling on the cathode. And now what I'm asking is, what is the overall reaction happening in this electron? Is it? An old reaction is oxidation because electrons are released. See, I have taken this as the uh, reaction A. This is a reaction happening at the anode. And this is called oxidation because you can see four electrons appearing on the right-hand side of the arrow. That means electrons are produced. Yeah, fine, that's an oxidation reaction. Similarly, cathode reaction, I told that cathode reaction is reduction because electrons are gained by H plus ions. If I give you the equation now, see I have electron, there are two hydrogen. Two hydrogen, this time, gain electrons. See, electrons are marked on the left-hand side. In the equation A, electrons are produced. They are on the right-hand side. On the equation B, electrons are written on the left-hand side because electrons are taken. So we can combine this equation A and equation B to find out the overall equation. If we construct the overall reaction, it takes a form as I have shown here. See. 4H plus react with 4OH minus to produce 2H2, 1O2, and H2O. There should be two water also. There should be two water. If you take down this equation, please make sure that we have two written in front of H2O because otherwise, on the left-hand side, here we have four hydrogen. In the four hydroxyl, also we have four hydrogen. But on the right-hand side, we have four hydrogen on hydrogen, H2, and two hydrogen on H2. So we have to definitely multiply this by two. If I show that again to you, there should be two written in front of H2. Okay, now, you take any uh, distilled water sample and using carbon electrodes, you pass electric current. When you pass electricity, DC current, okay? At the anode, oxygen gas is produced. And on the cathode, hydrogen gas is produced. They are shown in different oxidation and reduction reactions. And finally, to show what is happening overall in the reaction, we can add these two equations. When you add these two equations, we get 4H plus 4H minus two other reactants. They produce given 2H2, O2, and there should be 2H2O. The reason why I have written this 2H2 in a very big font size, and oxygen is a little bit lesser than that, for a reason. What is the reason? What is the final observation in this electrolysis? If you do this, you will see as seen the following equation versus equation, yeah, the same thing I have taken. Again, I'm telling you there should be two over here in front of H2O. As seen in the following equation, the volumes of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas are not equal. See, here we have two in front of H2. That means two moles of hydrogen gas are produced with how many moles of oxygen? One mole of oxygen. So hydrogen to oxygen gas is produced in two is to one ratio. If I show this diagram in a different manner, same diagram, but then I have changed the uh, electrodes. Electrodes are fixed to this at the bottom. And there's a, maybe a container, a tube or gas syringe, not gas syringe, uh, 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 most probably, uh, most of the time, you can take uh, measuring cylinder. We can have a measuring cylinder or a test tube, boiling tube rather, because boiling tube is bigger than test tube. Or else, you can take gas jars also. Inverted gas jars can be 
kept over one over n one one over cat. So what happens? The oxygen gas is produced, and this oxygen gas will go up through the water and get collected over there in this container. And the cathode hydrogen gas is produced. They also go up and they collect it uh, in the upper level of this tube. And because I have two hydrogen and one oxygen production happening here, always you will see the volume ratio of the gases collected between oxygen and hydrogen, okay? One is to two. So if you see an apparatus like this, where the volume collected in one container is twice than the other one. Definitely, the bigger volume is for hydrogen and a small volume for oxygen. And you should know that this is electrolysis of water. This is a very, very short video. I just want to explain the most important points um, that you should know about electrolysis of actified water. See, I can show you the volume of hydrogen and volume of oxygen form here. I have shown these uh, uh, shapes, a bigger shape for hydrogen and a smaller shape for oxygen to show the variation in hydrogen and oxygen gas volumes. And don't forget, the small volume is always oxygen and this big volume is always hydrogen. I think you got a clear idea about electrolysis of water. And in the next video, I will talk about the electrolysis of uh, some of the important thing, which is important for you to know according to our syllabus requirement. Thank you very much for listening to me. I hope you have learned some important points.